So, Ron, I, I, at the time this story gripped, you know, the whole world, basically, um, and everybody had a, an invested outcome in the, in the story. Um, how did this actually land on your, in your portfolio? Why did you want to do this? It, it came to me, uh, you know, probably 18 months, almost two years later, a uh, screenplay by Bill Nicholson. Uh, and, uh, and of course, I thought I knew the headlines. I, I'd paid attention to the story, but there was, there was so much involved uh, and, 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 a, and a wider variety of acts of courage beyond even the diving and the rescue that I didn't know anything about. And, um, and I, just, I just felt like, well, that, that could be very compelling. It's informative. It, it, uh, you know, it's an inspiring theme, this idea of, of this international unity and what they were able to achieve. But I also just frankly felt like on a human interest level, it could be really engrossing, entertaining, and emotional. Yeah, definitely. And Rick, I don't know, when Ron came to you and said like he was making making the film, and he wanted you part of it. Did you have any apprehension that you wanted to be there? Or it, well, it didn't actually work like that. We had signed on quite early to two producers, Gabrielle Tanner and PJ Sandvik, and it was sort of from our point of view. We got lots of offers. We signed with them. It was sort of speculative. We didn't know who was going to uh, direct it, who was going to fund it, or anything like that. Once they got our life rights. Uh, the producers employed a, a scriptwriter, Bill Nicholson, and then when they had our life rights, they went to Hollywood. We've got got the, the, the rescue divers, the, the screenplay. Who wants to direct it? So we, it was at that point that, that Ron came on board, and obviously from our point of view, we didn't know who we, who we were going to get. Yeah. But you know, I mean, who would be better placed to, to direct? Uh, it than of course, Ron? of course, it does a, it does brilliantly when you know you bring a lot of um, anxiety. That how I felt watching it. I felt a lot of anxiety and I felt really claustrophobic. Um, how do you go about putting that kind of those feelings on the screen? Well, you know, you build the cave. We couldn't go into real caves; far too dangerous. Couldn't control it, and 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 uh, and, and so forth. But uh, but. Molly, who's our production designer, myself, storyboard artist, we spent time uh, talking to Rick, talking to John, talking to Jason about the, you know, sort of the, the most challenging bits, the places that were the most threatening, where, where, you know, the complexity was at its highest. And those were the sections of the cave that we, that we built, that we wanted to dramatize. I frankly thought it was going to be much easier. <laughs> I've done a lot of underwater work. I've, you know, I've shot underwater a lot. But as soon as you actually get people in these super confined areas, even if they're sets, it slows everything down. It becomes just a little bit more dangerous, a little trickier, a little more technical. Uh, and uh, yeah, it takes ages involved. just to put the gear on. And yeah. off, so that, that adds time. Uh, but when um, when Rick and Jason, who are the ones who were able to come and be these sort of on-set technical advisors, started working with Viggo Mortensen, who's very meticulous, very research-driven, <laughs> so is Colin Farrell. Uh, at a certain point, they were soaking all this in, they were learning the techniques, and they came to me and they said, I don't, we don't want any doubles. We, uh, you know, we, we've learned it, it's safe, we can do it, and please let yeah. us. So we had to reschedule everything, but I mean, that extra effort, those extra days that they put in, in the tank, gave me, uh, as a director, so much more latitude in terms of how we could show this and make it personal and connect it to you know the characters. And from our point of view, I mean, we had trained them. They were excellent at taking direction. That's their job. So they, they did look like us. They amassed 40 years of cave diving experience <laughs> in, in a week or two. And it was entirely appropriate to have them doing it rather than stunt doubles who wouldn't have learned to move like us and look look like us. So, you know, it, it, it added realism to the whole thing. But it was great having these guys around, uh, you know, and also as they began coaching the guys and teaching them, um, the actors were not only absorbing, of course, the techniques of the diving, they're also their, per their personalities, the way they think, uh, the details about what went on, that, you know, you, you can have all the interviews and conversations you want, but much more comes out in conversation. And, uh, you know, it meant, it meant so much. But the, and and they, these guys not only helped with the diving, they also, you know, the camp scenes and all of it, uh, the, t the technical language, getting that to be, you know, as yeah. conversational as it could be. But there'd be times when we'd all feel tired. Making a movie is a bit of a strain. Uh, the guys would, you know, schlepping all the gear around and underwater. And all we had to do was look over and sort of say, these guys <laughs> did it. <laughs> what are we bitching about? <laughs> these guys did this thing. Wow. Well, 
But the other side of that, I was looking at Vigo and Colin in the wetsuits and the cylinders all day, and I was thinking, I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming to Vigo playing you, actually, I mean, uh, did you ever, for the life of you, think that Vigo would be playing you in a film? Of course not. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even know many actors. So there are lots of friends were s- suggesting people. I think Vigo was on the list, but no, I, I would have no idea. It wasn't until one day uh, Ron rang me up and said, we've got an actor to play you. We think he's very appropriate, but he'll only do it if he has access to you. Hmm. Uh, which, you know, uh, I thought that was going to happen anyway, but, you know, I was only too pleased. He, he actually didn't give me the name, but he gave enough clues. <laughs> Age appropriate and uh, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> I did need to be able to promise that to Vigo. And look, some actors don't want that. They, you know, they want to rely a little bit more on their own uh, imagination. But, you know, Vigo is so meticulous and wanted that connection. And it turned out Colin Farrell, you know, wanted to have that kind of relationship uh, with John Valanthan as well. And John couldn't come on location, but was in constant communication uh, with Colin. And it, it meant, you know, it meant the world. I guess some actors are intimidated by having the real right. people there. That's but, right. but that certainly wasn't the case no, here. Wasn't. No, no. Okay. They, they were lapping it up, okay. any information. Thank you very much for talking to me today. It's been a pleasure. You, you thank, you. Right, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey you 